To properly learn HTML, we're going to build this basic web page. So let's fire up VS Code and get started. So first things first, let's take a look at the project that we're hoping to build. This is the design for the project that we're looking to build. Basically, it's a simple form with you know, some styling in the background, some different form, different sizes of the headers and things like that. All right, so first things first, um, you're gonna go to the link in the description below and connect your account so that you can download all of these starter files for free. Really, you just need the images, but we can use the entire starter kit to get, get us going. So what we've been provided with here is a lot of information. They've basically gone ahead and created a bunch of files for us. Or I'm gonna go ahead and hide this file so that we can work together to build it again. So what we want to do is create a new file and call that index.html, just like they had it. That's just the convention that folks use to write new HTML files. Awesome. So now we want to actually take our HTML file and show it to our, like we want to see the, the fruits of our labor, right? We've created the file, we want to see it on the web. So we're going to click down here where it says go live. Remember we installed live server in the last unit? Well, we're going to start using it now. So in the bottom right where it says go live, we just want to click that to run live server. And it started. So it started at port 5500. If I mouse over one and I go to local host 5500, I'm getting my web page, but there's literally nothing there. Now, why is this? It's because we haven't put anything in the file yet. So let's see if I say, hello, uh, hello world, and click save. Still nothing, that's weird. Why, why is that happening? Well, it's because HTML, as you might've glimpsed at in the other file, has a very specific folder structure that actually tells the computer that it is a properly formatted HTML file. We can't go, just go ahead and type text into our editor. We actually need to format it properly. And you'll even see um, VS Code is giving us a little, live server is giving us a little hint here, like live reload is not possible without a header or a body tag. You know, um, basically it's telling us like, hey, you're missing pieces to this file. So VS Code has a really, really cool feature where if you type an exclamation mark, it will actually, using Emmet, which is a built-in um, autocomplete feature, it will actually provide you with the whole doc type for an HTML file. I encourage you to use it because very rarely will you actually have to type out doc type HTML um, in your actual job. So if you hit exclamation point and enter, it will take all of that boilerplate and put it on the page for you. If we click save, now we have a bunch of proper elements. And let's take a look what it is. So the first one, it says doc type HTML. So that's basically just telling us that the document is of the HTML type. If you notice this right underneath doc type HTML, there's this HTML tag that actually has a matching pair at the bottom. Remember we talked about HTML coming in pairs? Well, that is the opening and the closing HTML tag. Now, one thing you need to remember with HTML is that everything falls within elements, right? And if you don't write something within the HTML element, it doesn't exist on the page. So as we're going to start writing, let's make sure that we write everything within this HTML element. Let's go to, down to the next level. Here we have a head and underneath the head, it seem, they seem to be on the same level, we have body. So head and body. You can think about HTML as if it was a human body. So the head is what contains a lot of the information, you know, the um, behind the scenes kind of knowledge. The body is what contains the literal element. So if we look at the head here, we'll see there's a meta, a couple of meta tags here, which are basically um, metadata information to basically tell the computer a little bit more information about our HTML file. So it's telling it what character set to use, um, content, the viewport, that kind of thing. Um, these aren't parts that we need to worry about right now. Um, then it also gives us a title. So we can actually give our web page a title. Let's call it sign up form. Now, if we go over to our browser and maybe we refresh the page, there's still nothing there. But if you notice in the top left, that thing that was saying localhost 5500 now says sign up form. So by changing the title in our HTML within our head, we are actually changing the title of our page. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so we've, we've kind of finished up with the head for now. We'll come back to this in later lessons, but for now, this is as good as we need to get. Next, we're gonna talk about the body. Now, as I mentioned, the body is where all of the elements live. So we wanna make sure that we're putting everything that we wanna see in the body. Rather than starting with just basic text, because although we could put hello world here and save it and then go back here and it would show up, that's not really semantically correct. 
HTML has a ton of different elements that you can actually use for text, for images, for buttons, as we've talked about before. But you want to make sure that you're using the element that is correct for the type of data that you're going to be presenting. So because I'm presenting some text, I'm going to probably use a header tag. So the H1 tag is the highest of header tags. There should only be one H1 tag on your page because that basically tells us that this is what the page is about. So as there's nothing else on the page, I'm going to call it the hello world page for now. So I type in hello world between these H1 tags and let's take a look. You'll see that it's already formatted it differently. That's because headers by default have some built-in styling. They're bolded, they're larger, um, they have more prominence on the page. If I was to go and create this with, let's say a, an H6 tag for instance, and save it, you'd see how tiny the text is. You can barely read it. So you, it's good to understand the importance um, and the prominence of H1 versus H2 versus H3 all the way down to H6 and when you should use them. I personally don't use H6 tags very often because that just requires so many headings before that to be used up. Let's take a look at our design. So as we can see here, it's this big image in the background and then we have learn to code by watching others, see how experienced developers solve problems in real time. And then there's this form on the right hand side. Okay, um, let's start building this. All right, so learn to code by watching others. I would guess that that's probably the H1. So let's type that in. And if we go over here, look at that. It's already refreshed, amazing. All right. And let's see, see how experienced developers solve problems. So this part right here, this see how experienced developers solve, you might be thinking, well, should we use an H2, an H3, an H4? You don't actually want to use a heading for this bit. This is something that you would use a P tag for or a paragraph tag. Paragraph tags are for those larger, more general pieces of text that um, you'll see on a web page, you know, just basically paragraphs of text. So we'll use the paragraph tag for this. Another really cool feature about VS Code is you can drag your tabs over to one side and then have them side by side. So you can kind of just reference what's going on in the other tab. So using a P tag, we'll say, see here. scripted tutorials is great, but understanding how developers think is invaluable. I agree. And you should definitely reach out to your mentor to get some of that one on one time. All right. Awesome. So we have our H1 and our P tag. Let's see how that's looking. Perfect. All right, cool. But then there's this another, this other section over here. There's like this, like try free for seven days. And then there's this like form situation. And then this looks like a button that you click. And then there's more text under here. So how do we want to structure it? We can kind of understand that there are two sections here, basically, right? There's a section on the left that is really just the text. It's like telling us about the page. And then there's a section on the right that is more about like what's actually going on. So we can use either the section element or we can use the div element, which it's more just a generic divider. So what I'm going to do is create two divs here, div one and div two. What I've done here is I've put all of this text into one div and then I've created the second div and I'm going to put all the form information in there. This is just to give them a good separation and it'll make it easier when we come back to style it later. So in this first section up here, I'm going to create a P tag and encapsulate that text. So we're going to say P. Now we have a form. This is the first time we're dealing with forms. Let's talk about what a form is. A form is, you know, you've probably submitted a bunch of forms online. And even when you signed up for GitHub, you were probably submitting a form. What a form does is it takes the different pieces of data that are submitted or entered by the user, and then it sends it to another location to be processed and dealt with. Um, maybe turned into a user, maybe, um, you know, you're sending in your Instacart order for the day, whatever it might be. Uh, forms are used across the web. So it's really important to know how to create them. So to create a form, we're going to type, we're going to actually use the element called form. And what that's going to do is just give us a few extra special, um, tools that you come with forms. So within a form, you can have a couple of different things. You can have an input and the great thing about a lot of these, um, VS code 
extensions we have installed is that they give you um, information here. So if you ever have a question about what something is as you're typing it, you can literally just click here where it says MDN reference and it will, you can say open it and then it will open it in a new tab and you can read all about the form input and the form element. I'll bring it over here so you can see what I'm talking about. So it's right here input form element, and it will give you all of this information about the input within the form element, right? It'll tell you that it has a type, it has IDs, it has a name, it's required, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So input's a really great place for us to start. Um, so within HTML, you don't just have all of these different elements. So if we go back up to the top where it says HTML here, and we see lang equals English. Lang is an attribute specific to HTML, the language attribute, right? We can specify the language in HTML um, because it's sort of like the overall element. Um, not every element will have this feature, but really you wouldn't need it if you set your overall um, language as English. Just like that, all of these different elements have their own particular attributes. So input is one of those. Input has several different types of attributes. So one is the type, right? You can specify what type of input you have because there's several different types of inputs you could have. So a little hack that I wanna show you here. All right, so when you type in type and you hit enter, it will give you all of the different options you have for what type of input it could be. So it could be a button, a checkbox, a color, <laughs> URL. There could be so many different types of input that you could use. So you can start to see how HTML has a lot of flexibility even though um, it is a fairly limited uh, language to write in. We want this to be taking the first name of what our users input. So we're gonna want it to be a text, so type of text. And then another attribute on input, and you can look it up right here in the MDN docs. Another attribute is the, is it the name? Is the name. So you want the name of whatever the input is. So whether it is, uh, is it the first name of the person? Is it their last name? Is it their age? What is that piece of information that they are submitting? So if we go back over here, we type in name, we would actually put first and we could put first dash name. And that's how we know what, um, what piece of information it is there and then we close it off. Inputs are actually self-closing tags, so rather than having this slash input again, we wouldn't do that. That's not proper syntax. Prettier will give us a little error here saying, hey, self, like if there's nothing in between your tags, they should close by themselves. So what a self-closing tag is, is if we take input and we isolate it here, it's a tag that, ha that ends with a slash and a bracket. So there's nothing that goes in between it. The tag itself is the value. Another really cool, um, feature that you can use with inputs, another cool attribute is the placeholder attribute. So you can actually give your user a prompt. You know when you ever go in a form and you're not quite sure what you're supposed to put in? You can actually give it a prompt, like email address, name, etc. So let's go ahead and give our, imp our first input attribute the placeholder of first name. Cool, so now when we go back over to our page, Awesome, when you look here, this is our little input box and this is our first name box. You may notice something interesting though. All our code is going straight down. Like it's not just like coming onto the side. That's because we haven't put any styles in yet. We'll work on styling this page in the next unit when we talk about CSS, but for now, let's just try and get everything on the page in a semantic manner. All right, let's bang out the next couple of inputs here. So we're gonna copy and paste and paste and paste bit of a hack there. And we're gonna type in, this is gonna be their last name. So we're gonna change the name to last name. So remember, these values that they submit are gonna be sent to, you know, a database or a backend, or, you know, we're gonna log into the console, but we need to understand what they're sending us, right? Because if we meet somebody whose name is like George Steven, we won't know which, whether George or Steven is the first name like, unless we assign it a particular uh, key. So we've, we've decided that the first one's gonna be first name and the next one's gonna be last name. Placeholder for this one, last name. And then the next one looks like. All right, we've got our four inputs here. Again, they're sitting side by side instead of stacked on top of one another, but that's something we'll fix in another lesson. And then 
Underneath this, we need one more type of input. Remember earlier that we saw that input could be a button? Well, that's specifically related to forms. So with forms, you wanna make sure that when you submit the form, all of that information that you submit with the form gets sent with it. And we do this by creating an input type of button and including that within the form. So we'll create one more input, we'll call it input, created of the type button, name, well, let's change name to actually value and we'll put claim your free trial inside there. And it's, it is still a self-closing tag. All right, okay, cool. So value claim your free trial. If we go here, boom, big button that says claim your free trial. Awesome, we're flying through this. All right, I think the last thing we need to add is this piece here. By clicking the button, you are agreeing to our terms and services. All right, so let's go ahead. That seems to be outside of the form. Let's go ahead and add it down here. Let's do a P tag and we'll put it. Now something interesting here is that both terms and services and try it free for seven days are bolded, but we haven't bolded them yet. So what we could do is actually use the strong tag. Now we could do this in CSS as well, but there's some really easy ways to do it in HTML. The strong tag basically just makes the text stronger um, or bold. So we, we'll, just put, we'll just wrap the pieces of our uh, text that we want to appear bolded with the strong tag. So let's put one here and try it free for seven days. Let's put one here. Save that. And boom, there we go. Try it free for seven days is bolded as well as terms and services. Awesome. I think we've gotten all of the elements on the page. The last thing we'll wanna do before we move on to CSS is to push our code to GitHub and get an initial recording of what we're doing here. So let's go ahead and open up a new instance of the terminal. All right, so this is in a folder called project files. Let's make this a Git repository. So we'll type in Git in it and we're gonna change the branch to main and awesome. All right, so we have our git init branch. And as you can see here, all of these are, haven't been added yet to our, um, our git repository. So they're showing up green and untracked. So what we can go ahead and do, and these are just the designs and the images as well as the index and the instructions for, for how to build this. But really, we don't, need to we don't need to track all of these things. All we really need to do is to track our index.html file at the moment. When we add more CSS and images and work with different things, we can start tracking those. But for now, all we need is our index.html. So we can do this and we can, we can just call this initial commit. And we can commit it. And there we go. Done. All right. So now what we want to do is link this to a GitHub repository. Because remember, we're tracking all of our code on GitHub from the very first day all the way to the end. So let's navigate over to GitHub. And we'll go, go to your account, whatever your account name is. And we'll go ahead and we'll create a new repository. So head over to repositories, new repository. And we are gonna call this sign up form. I hope it's available. Yes, it is. Awesome. All right. Doesn't need a description. We're going to keep it public and we're just going to go ahead and create a repository just like we did the last time. Awesome. Since we've already created a, we've already initialized it as a Git repository. All we have to do is press this copy button right here. And it's going to copy all of these nice lines of code that we don't need to go and memorize. I will hop back over to VS code, paste it in our terminal, hit enter. And there we go. It's set up to track. So, if we go back over to GitHub, refresh the page, just to double check our work. All right, we'll see that we have one index.html file committed one minute ago. We have one commit and it says initial commit. And the great thing about GitHub is you can actually click in and see all of the information. So this is everything we just typed in there. See our text boxes, our buttons, our form, our P tags, our divs, our H1. We've got a lot of things going on in this HTML file right now. So let's hop over and learn some CSS and add some styling to this page.